Dennis Miller. I'm an Amador County Master Gardener. Uh, I have a five and a half acre uh, property here. I have 26 fruit trees. Uh, I've got uh, raised bed gardens. I've got uh, five 24 foot raised beds and I've got uh, 18 50 gallon half drums uh, all under per permanent irrigation for, for my gardening. Uh, one of the things that's really important, I think, is uh, one is to keep your trees short like this. You don't have to use a, a ladder to go up and, and uh, prune. Also, it allows you to do your stuff like your dormant sprays and, and they're pruning a lot easier. Uh, another thing is you need deer fencing. And deer fencing is, a, is mandatory uh, if, if you want to have uh, an orchard like this because deer can work these over really easy. We have a deer fence, but it is it's a graduated size as far as the, the fence on the lower side keeps uh, your uh, rabbits out and it graduates up to a larger size. If you're only working with an orchard only, not a raised bed, but just an orchard, you can get away with having this as your fence. I use a six foot wire fence, 10 foot T post, two strands of bob wire. I've never had a deer go through this. They will jump six feet, I know that. But this gives me six plus an extra foot, foot and a half of uh, barbed wire. They don't, they don't go through this at all. Okay. This is a Gravenstein apple tree. It's grafted to M111 rootstock. Uh, I did this back in uh, 2015. It's five years old. Uh, it was M111 rootstock, and it's got it's a Gravenstein apple. And I probably thinned at least two to three hundred apples off of this about a month ago. So that's what's growing. This tree, if you can notice, I keep it short purposely. This this is an M111, which is a semi, uh, it's actually a semi dwarf, which would go up probably 20, 25 feet tall if you didn't keep pruning back. But I'm keeping this short purposely. This is what it looked like originally. This is a M111, I, or I, the graft is, I grafted on the Empire, or the um, Gravenstein, and that's just what it looked like, and this is five years later. One nice thing about this is that you have a tree that's short enough, you don't need a ladder. When you do your dormant spray, you're going to use a lot less spray. Uh, you can hand pick. A lot of pluses for a backyard gardener, this is the ideal way of doing it. Again, this is a, a, uh, a plum tree, and again, this is, a, this is probably about 10 years old, and you notice it's just armpit tall, and it's got lots of fruit on it, and I've, again, it's been several, two or three hundred pieces of fruit I took off of it a month ago, so this is ripening up really quick. The, uh, Flavor King Pluot, it gives a red Pluot, it gives a seed that's very small in the center, lots of fruit on the outside, excellent uh, for canning or just eating. Uh, and again, this is at this height right now, we're probably just a little higher than my shoulder. And this, this is probably about 10 years old. This is a plum tree, and again, it's a standard size plum tree. It's not a, not a semi dwarf. And you look at the fruit in here, and I've uh, thinned hundreds of pieces of fruit out of this about a month, month and a half ago. This is probably about three weeks from being ready to pick. Yeah, I think the important thing to realize as a home gardener or a home orchardist is if you keep your trees at a height that you can manage. This is this one here is about shoulder high, but at least normally I cut them off no taller than six feet tall. Keep them cut back every year at six feet tall. It makes it easier for you to do your maintenance on it. You can do your, your uh, pruning, you can do your garment spray. You're gonna have more fruit than you know what to do with as a home, gourder, a home orchard. This is, I mean, there's probably well over 100 pounds of fruit on this little tree right here right now. And how much fruit do you really need as a home orchardist? Yeah, and the other thing is you don't have to climb a ladder. If you take this same tree, which is a standard sized tree, and it's 35 feet tall, 
even on an 18 foot ladder, you're still not getting to the top. And when you get to be my age at 79, uh, you don't need to be on the top of an 18 foot ladder reaching for fruit. Okay, this, uh, we're going to be putting bird netting on this. These are not ripe yet, but if I leave them any longer, the birds will be getting in. So what I'm going to do is I kind of come in here, I'm going to cut the top of this off shorter, just so it's even, and then we'll put the net over top of it. So that will allow us to put the netting down here, and it'll be fairly flush. Now we've placed the bird netting. You see it flattened it out pretty good. And that'll keep the birds out. And what I'll do is I will eventually take and pull this back in all the way to the trunk and tie it up with the trunk. That keeps rats, foxes, things like that from going up into the tree. Otherwise, they will. I've, many times they come up here and I see foxes in the trees eating fruit. So it needs to be tied off right back against the trunk. Okay, this plum tree is ripe. We just took the netting off of it. And it's like a, a golf ball uh, carrier that you get from, the, from your golf club and put a hook on it. And we just hang it, hang it go like that. And now you can just take and pick, 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 and drop them right back in the bucket. So here we picked the, the fruit. There wasn't a big, uh, a large crop of fruit for this particular uh, tree this year. We had hail and lost a, a lot of the uh, blossoms on it. But there we got this fruit picked and you will show you what it looks like and you go, mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Really sweet and juicy. Hey, this is a, uh, it's a, a pear tree. Bear, bear. And this is why I normally prune this off right here. So it's about six feet, that's where I cut it off. That's all new growth. Notice it's about two feet of new growth. <clears throat> we got our pears in here, but they're Bartlett. I said Bart, Bartlett. The thing is, I want to put bird netting on this because the birds will get into it. So I'm gonna take and cut this off right back where I pruned it last year. By flattening it off, it will allow me to put bird netting on it without hanging it up. Do this all the way across the top. That will allow me to burden it and you go on it easily. You do need some shade for these this fruit. If you take and expose the fruit to full sun, they'll they'll they won't hold up. But that's about off just about an inch higher than what it was taken off last year. It's a Bartlett pear tree that we uh, uh, took the top off of it about four weeks ago, so I could put put bird netting on it to protect the fruit from the birds. The thing is, is you don't want the fruit to ripen on the tree. A pear, if you let it ripen on the tree, the birds will nail it and it, and it won't be as good. So what you want is take and pull this up at 90 degrees. And it should come right off. In fact, you could easily take and go like that. That's exactly the way they should be. They should not be ripe enough to eat. From here, they have to go in and go into a, a cool area in your house down low. Don't put them in the garage because if you got your car in the garage it's going to be too high. So you put it put in a near the floor or on a low table or counter and hold these for about two to three weeks and then you will be just beautiful. Again this is a Bartlett pear. They're, they're excellent eating and uh, this is just as out. Boom. Boom. Okay, the, the, you notice these pears look like they're, they're really ripe. Well, what's happened, we've had triple digits now for a week as far as temperatures. It was 109 yesterday, and that has just got just plain hot. This is not, I don't normally like to pick them when they're already this color. It's ripe. There's another one, and it's, it's ripe, but you don't want them to get quite that, that, that color. 
only because they will ripen up evenly. The color will be even if it's ripened up in the shade. Again, the birds will attack these. If I if I had I had the netting on this now for about four weeks. I took the netting off last night, so the birds haven't damaged it. But I left this tree open like this today. These would all be nailed. Yes, you'll see this rope in here. It's like a hay, hay or straw bale rope. What I did is I tied this off, tied this down to pull this limb down and over before it was going up too straight. And I want to fill this in. And right behind it is another one at this area right here. I've tied it off. This limb came core over here and there was a void. And so I brought this back in here. That gives me symmetric shape of a tree. And that's once that's stayed on there for a few months, it'll stay that way. Okay, this is we just picked this tree out. We didn't have to use a ladder. This tree is about six feet tall, and you can see the yield. And uh, again, how much fruit as a home gardener do you really need? But again, it's it's the best thing that we can do is uh, have it to where you don't get out a ladder.